I'm Ernie Carwell. I've been in Denver over 40 years. I'm an author. I grew up in violence, and I was violent, and I was pissed off and angry, and it wasn't until seminary in the 80s that I left that I heard the concept of nonviolent protesting, and I remember the first time I read it, I thought that was the stupidest thing I had ever heard, and yet then after studying Martin Luther King and Mahatma Gandhi and watching it and, and learning about it, it was so illogical that it began impressing with me the power that is contained within it. And someone said, have we lost that idea? I think the idea is still there. We just need some great leaders, some strong leaders who can remind us of the power of this you know, incredible, incredible concept. Thanks. Um, this is a poem that I wrote as me viewing the people I interact with every day and what I see and what I hear and what I see in the news and our country as a whole. <coughs> So many words learned, so many questions asked, no answers ever given. How long will this madness last? So much innocence lost in the past. Don't ask me who life was short. No need for an hourglass, you see. How can we as people look forward to the future if we all scarred and blinded by the past? And dreams become unreachable. Children start to lose hope, so kids become unteachable. People start to develop a disrespect for authority, so Laws become breakable. Americans start to realize the disgusting realities of life, so streets become untamable. You see, in my history class, I learn about other wars and the tragedies. Now I'm imagining a war without world, a world without war, but with that comes a world without peace, simply because of greed. You see, greed is an incurable affection that is holding back the true potential of humanity. So sadly, we don't get peace. For a life, you give a life, something like American sacrifice. Forced tears shedding means that destructive blood is being shed. In Americanized life, knowledge is power, but in reality, a man with a gun is power. Not earned, not given, but bought. An uncivilized man who gets the inhumane choice of deciding whether a person lives or dies has power. But what is power? Who exactly deserves power? Is power won by love or is it won by fear? Is it won by the tears and the pain or the smile on the face? The elevation of hearts or the separation of blood from veins? Where does it start? Or more importantly, what does it end? There's things I don't understand. So much things I don't understand. Like, how can you create a, create a life and deny that life? How can a boy become a man when the only man he wants to know, the only man he wants to watch him grow, leaves simply because he is able to breathe? I guess things just seem to get to me, like how women claim to want love, but they just like the idea. They want a cute face rather than a loyal mind, so all they know is broken hearts in one night. But what's disgusting it's how we ship our soldiers overseas to fight for peace. But my peace isn't overseas. The killer of Martin Luther King wasn't overseas. The killer of those angels in that elementary school wasn't overseas. The killer of those people in a movie theater wasn't overseas. So you tell me whose peace exactly are we dying for? We are separated by color. United by the pain, united by the tragedies, the place we find love is the same place we find hate. Only God can judge, but what's his judgment to a non-believer? Country full of celebrities, I'm struggling trying to find a leader. I said only God can judge, and if I, were, if I were sin, I would be shamed. But I'm not. I can only pray to my heroes because they all seem to get shot. Maybe the devil has a band that we're just instruments in his plot. Nowadays, people act like they're too good to praise God. Well, where I come from, people too hood to praise God. 
<laughs> Yet they claim to be Christians, but fail to follow his ways. And then when something goes wrong, they on their knees crying and shouting and blaming his name, asking them, why me? What did I do to you? All I want is love. I thought you were supposed to be my father too. I don't mean to sound rude, but I'm praying, but I don't know who I'm praying to. <laughs> Our generation is so weak-minded, start to doubt their faith. How can I, from what I know, when I die, <coughs> rest in peace knowing I left my family behind in the land of the free? You can love me or hate me, choose me or lose me, but my words represent the truth, so there's no force alive that can mute me, but I never said they can't shoot me. We all want change, but fear change. To me, it's so amusing. I think that's why when we see tragedy, everything is so confusing. I guess life is what you're making in the world that is so forsaken. Before it's too late, a new era needs to awaken. Thank you.